I know if Mayweather coming to UFC, he not looks good like Conor. You know, it's a different sport. You know, it's crazy. I respect Conor because he's coming to boxing. You know, I know it's a little bit difficult for him. You know, he looks nice. He looks good. You know, I I know if Mayweather coming to UFC, he not looks good like Conor. You know, it's a different sport. Chad Mendes. That's at 145 pounds he's knocking guys out at. Chad Money Mendes. This is my time to shine. It's all over. That's it. It. That's it. It. And it's all over. That's it. Chad Money Mendes. And his trademark backflip for good measure. Welcome back to UFC tonight. Our next guest has dropped Jose Aldo, knocked out Ricardo Lamas, and hunted more deer, pheasant, boar, and duck than Ted Nugent. Joining us via Skype from Boise is Chad Mendez. Chad, how many different kinds of animal meats do you have in your refrigerator, man, or freezer? What what do you got there? Um, I got I got a bit. I got, you know, like you said, deer, elk, I got some pheasant, some some geese, some wild boar. Um, that's basically what I live off through my training camps and and even outside of camp. So uh, I love it that that's how you started this off. Thanks, bro. <laughs> well, well, listen, how, how does it feel, man? It's been a little while since you've been in the octagon, obviously. How does it feel to be back uh, after such a long layoff on fight week? Man, I am so excited. I, uh, you know, this time off has been good for me, both men mentally, physically. Um, just being able to let my body heal up, my head heal up. You know, those last two fights, like, you know, Connor and, and then get caught by Frankie. You know, both rung my bell, and you know, I just wanted to take a little time away too. So that, I mean, the time off has been great, and uh, you know, I have that that drive, that motivation back. Uh, I've I've implemented some new things in the training camp as far as uh, different systems and um, a little bit more science as far as following heart rate and um, um, you know, going off of VO2 max type stuff, and just implementing that stuff in the camp is has really helping me nerd out, I guess, and and kind of get really involved in it and it's just something like a new excitement man I, i'm excited to get back in there and, and compete and put all this stuff to the test so i'm excited well chad you mentioned the time off and i hate to address the elephant in the room but the two-year suspension you know what did that teach you about you know you saw it and, and about yourself really you know i just one one thing if i could pull anything from this is just really pay attention to what i'm i'm putting on my body what i'm putting in my body um, you know, it's, it's tough, you know, as fighters, you know, I've, I've done it a lot. Just, you know, I'll take a supplement without reading everything on the back. Um, I know it's whey protein, but you know, or whatever it is. And, you know, I just assume, okay, there's not going to be anything illegal in this, but you know, that's not always the case. Sometimes there's stuff that companies put in supplements that, um, shouldn't be there as well. And, you know, that's just another situation that we have to deal with, but um, all in all, I just got to, you know, really pay attention to what I'm, what I'm using. So now you're fighting Miles Jury. Let's move past all the negative stuff. Miles Jury, what's the key to beating this guy? And I think keeping this guy um, guessing. I think using a lot of angles, feints, fakes. Um, you know, he's a counter striker. He likes um, keeping the pace at his own. You know, using those kicks, the teep kicks, the rear kicks to keep his range. Um, that's definitely something he loves to do. Um, he'll he'll throw some crazy stuff in there, flying knees, um, and he, he's pretty comfortable on the ground. You know, he's he's obviously great at jujitsu, and um, you know he's, he trains at a good camp. Those guys have solid wrestling as well. Two years away from the UFC, there's been a lot of changes, a lot of new fighters on the roster. What do you think of the UFC these days? Has it changed a lot? You mean for my weight class? Yeah, for your weight class. Yeah, I mean, there's. I think one thing that's it's really changed is the size of these fighters. A lot of the 55ers are moving down to featherweight. Um, I feel like I, I'm not sure if they're going to keep. I heard Dana talking about moving the morning weigh-ins um, back to the evening weigh-ins, and I don't know if that's going to change some of these guys, some of the game plan on what weight class they're going to go. But um, you know, a lot of these fighters are getting bigger and bigger at featherweight as far as length goes. You know, these guys are getting tall, they're getting longer, and uh, you know, for me, it's everyone I've fought my entire career has had a reach advantage on me both with the legs and the arms. So it's not anything that's a huge difference for me. Um, I think my, my athleticism, my speed, my wrestling, my power, if I can keep all that on point, and like I said, come up with these game plans and stick to it during these fights, I think I match up great with all these guys. Best of luck Saturday night. Uh, all the best. Thank you. 
All right, let's take a closer look at one of Chad's favorite weapons with the knockout coverage spotlight sponsored by Metro PCS. To get knockout coverage on the UFC on a network that covers 99% of people in the U.S. All right, here is Chad Mendez getting it done here against Conor McGregor with that lead right hand. Uh, doing it against a southpaw, that is a good weapon. Of course, he will want to use that against Miles Jury, the southpaw here. Very good at slipping his head off that center line and landing that right hand. He has knockout power with that hand as well. Yeah, absolutely. Time and time again, we've seen him hurt people with that fight, uh, sorry, that punch. The Conor McGregor fight, that was one of the hardest fights that Conor's ever had. And then after that, uh, the Ricardo Lamas fight. First round, boom, put Ricardo away. Big power from Chad Mendes. Yeah, absolutely. You got to worry about his double leg takedown as well. Let's bring in Ivanov's UFC welcome party. Joining us via Skype from Boise, the site of Saturday's final, Junior Dos Santos. Junior, is Boise everything you thought it would be? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. You know, great city, great people. I'm enjoying to be here. So, Junior, what do you know about your opponent, Ivanov? Well, I don't know too much. I know that he's, uh, he's coming from um, Sambo. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that he's tough. You know, he has only one loss in his whole career. And he already beat the biggest heavyweight of the whole time, I think, you know, Fedor Milenenko. So, Junior, you're coming off a long layoff due to a mistake from USADA. What changes do you think USADA need to make? Uh, yeah... I, what I think they they shouldn't take you out of the fight based uh, on the, depends on on what they found on you. Like in my case, they found little amount traits of diuretic, a cheap diuretic on me, hydrochlorothiazida. So based on that, they shouldn't just take me out of the fight. They should do the investigation. But they should they should keep me fighting, you know. And if I declare, if I get declared guilty at, at the end of the investigation, then they could could double the penalty. But don't take me out. Don't stop my life based on uh, on of course on what I take. Now you must have been very frustrated because you were supposed to fight Francis Ngannou. Is that a fight you still want? I don't pick fight. Uh, I don't pick opponents. You know, I, I want to fight with the best. You know, if the UFC wants me to fight in Gano, it's gonna be my pleasure. My 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 goal, my biggest goal, is to become to become the champion of the world again, and I'll do everything what it, what I have to do to get there. So in Ghana was actually fighting Saturday night. Another person that was fighting Saturday night was Daniel Cormier against Stipe Miocic. What did you think of that fight? Oh yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, that was a big surprise for me, you know. Of course, I, I, I thought uh, Daniel Cormier could win that fight, but not the way he won the fight, you know. <laughs> Knocking Steve out, you know. I think, you know, he did great, of course, but I think uh, Miocic accept the, to fight in the close distance, you know, accept the grappling game with, uh, with Cormier, which was the only chances that Cormier had to, to win that fight, you know. So... Congratulations for the new champion, and uh, that's it. Okay, well, listen, you train at American Top Team. Of course, you're a Brazilian, mm -hmm. but there's Colby Covington in the same building. Does that get a little weird ever? <laughs> no, not really. Uh, yeah, there's many Brazilians training at the ATT. Actually, you know, I, I never any pro I never had any problem with uh, with Colby. You know, I know he he say a lot of. Uh, bad things, you know, about even about my country. But, uh, man, the thing is, who is Kobe Covington in my life? He's nobody. So I don't <laughs> care about what he say. He's nobody in my life either. <laughs> uh, Junior, man, it's great to see you in good spirits, and uh, we can't wait for your fight on Saturday. Thank you very much, Kenny. Let's go. Good luck, my man. He seems too nice to be dangerous. <laughs> He's a wait, very nice guy. Yeah.